Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Coach Lilia. I am a relationship coach and a narcissist abuse survivor and today I'm going to be shining a lot more light on narcissistic females, okay? Whether it's your narcissistic wife, narcissistic girlfriend, and I don't want to have women think that I'm taking sides here because I'm not, okay? I am somebody that came out of abuse from a narcissistic male, my ex-husband, who was a raging malignant slash covert narcissist, and I've done my share of psychological abuse with him, and I know that men, they don't talk about it enough, okay? Most of my clients are men. They suppress their emotions. They don't talk about it. They feel like there is a problem when it comes to them talking about how they feel and all the abuse they've been through because that's how men are raised typically, to suppress their emotions and not to talk about their feelings. And we need to stop normalizing that. We need to normalize actually getting help because abuse is abuse and both genders suffer from psychological abuse because narcissism is prevalent in both genders, right? It's just about how is it manifested in males versus in females. And when, when it comes to how narcissism is manifested in females, well, I see a lot more covert narcissism. I see a lot more sadism where they actually like putting men through pain, okay? It's not just about the control. It's not just about getting rich and getting all the money and basically being the most powerful person. No, it's about not just cheating on you, but maybe cheating on you with your brother, not just breaking you down and divorcing you, but maybe lying and saying that you raped me and, you know, having a restraining order over you and having you locked away in prison or taking away kids from you. It's very vindictive stuff. So today I want to focus on talking about when the narcissistic woman, when the girlfriend or wife, when she finally breaks up with you, not you with her, but when she chooses to break up with you, when she leaves you, why does it hurt so much? Why is this narcissistic breakup so freaking painful? So let's go ahead and dive into it. Breakups on their own are very painful. We all know that. If you've been through a breakup before, you know that it hurts. But why does a narcissistic breakup hurt so much more? My male clients always come to me and say that, you know, she's been cheating on me. She's been doing X, Y, and Z. She maybe was psychologically abusing me, physically abusing me, devaluing me, and so on. I know she's bad for my health, and now she left me. Why do I want her back? Why does it hurt so much? Well, because she got you addicted. That's the trauma bond, the word we use over and over again, right? The term trauma bond, it's there. Now, you're probably somebody who comes from trauma yourself, and that's why you form that codependency with a narcissistic woman. So basically, when she leaves you, it activates that primal attachment because you're probably somebody that did not have secure attachment. You maybe had to scrape away for mom to see you or dad to see you. You had to fight for their love. You know, you were afraid of being neglected. You had to fight for their attention. It was like a cry for help all the time. So now, when the narcissistic woman that has formed this trauma bond with you and your happiness is truly dependent on her, when she gets up and leaves you, you have all of that activated and it's this cry for help for you, okay? Now you're in pain and you're feeling this pain even though with your brain you understand that she was so wrong for your health. You can't help how you feel and how it feels is like your stomach has been punched. It's like your insides have been turned upside down, right? I know how that feels and that trauma needs to break because you cannot have your happiness depend on another person. Narcissist or not, you need to find that happiness within yourself and that is where that healing comes in, okay? Let's move on to our next one here. Number two is the fact that you are completely confused after this woman leaves you because she has probably gaslighted you, telling you, threatening you that she's going to leave you so many times at this point that when she finally does it, you're like, why did this happen this time? What have I done wrong? And you start internalizing it and you, you feel so confused. You feel like you're the problem that made it happen. And she's put it in your head so many times probably that you're the narcissist, that you're the problem, that you're the one that's abusing her and you believed her. And now when my clients come to me after these women leave, after this narcissistic woman has moved on to new supply, they come to me and they say that, am I the problem? Am I where she left? And then we track things back, you know, from love bombing to devaluation to now discarding. No, you're not the problem. Stop feeling like you're the problem. I want you to stop internalizing it as you were the problem because we can pinpoint all the times that she has abused you, whether it's psychologically, physically, both, all the time she's cheated on you, all the time she's manipulated you. So how can you sit there and feel like you're the problem? 
I know one thing, when you're in a loving relationship, you don't feel like you're the problem. So that confusion needs to go away. Number three is the hope that you're attached to. That's why this narcissistic breakup hurts so much because you cannot detach yourself from the hope of what could have been. Because let's be honest, this narcissistic woman got you so sucked in because she has made you think that this kind of intimacy and connection that you guys share is something you can never find again. She analyzed you in the beginning and she has made you feel like the connection that she's got with you is on another level. And a lot of my clients will come to me and say, you know, Lily, uh, this woman, I really felt like I could save her. I really felt, she told me that the kind of connection that she feels with me, she never has felt this with anyone else, that she has never opened up about these insecurities with anyone else. My friend, she was lying to you. She was manipulating you this way. Why? Because at this very moment, the way that you feel right now and what you miss is exactly what she got you addicted to. She put you up on a pedestal. She made you feel like you were always her savior. And then she chipped away from you and then she broke you and she left you for a new man, right? She doesn't love him either. He's her new supply, but we'll get into that. So yes, what you are, why you are hurting right now is because she truly made you feel like you guys share a special connection and you had that hope that if she would just see you for what she used to see you in the beginning, things would go back to normal. But no, nobody flipped the switch but her. Why? Because this is what she does. She puts you on a pedestal and then she destroys you and she feeds off of that pain. And now that she's gone, one day you look back and understand that this is the best thing that's happened to you. Okay? The next one here is the fact that it's really hurtful for you to process that she's already moved on, that she's got a new guy that she's sleeping with, that maybe she's already engaged to someone new, right? And yes, you got to face the, the tough reality here, the fact that she probably had this new supply cooking while she was still with you, while she was still in a relationship with you, because this is how narcissists are. It doesn't even matter whether it's a male or a female narcissist. When a narcissist leaves, it's because they already have something better transactionally, of course, right? So she's probably onto a new guy that's got more money and that can take all of that from her for now. She's love bombing him, right? She's telling him how you're the problem and you were probably harassing her and, you know, I don't know, whatever bad things she could tell him about you she's doing it okay so please don't feel terrible that she's with someone else you should feel happy because if she's onto someone else at least she won't be as vindictive towards you as she has some time frame to forget about you while she's focused on this new supply okay i know it hurts like hell processing the fact that she was cheating that she had another guy but this is the tough reality except that there was never love towards you and there's no love towards this new guy he's just her new supply and he's gonna end up in your shoes down the road when she finds someone new to move on to okay and last but not least is the fact that you don't have a self a sense of who you are anymore right it's complete lack of identity because being in a relationship with a narcissist they chip away everything from you you forget what food you used to, you like to eat you forget what music you used to like to listen to you don't do anything for you anymore you don't have friends you're isolated and that is exactly what they wanted to do to you why so that at this very moment when she left you you don't have any support to go to you're alone and it hurts like hell and now if you go to your friends, you might think that they've seen this back and forth situation for so long that if you go to them, they'll say, hey man, we've told you from the start. Or what she might do is she might actually badmouth you to everyone so you won't have a support system because of that, okay? Because she will say terrible things about you and people will believe her because narcissistic women are perfect actresses and they can turn on that covert narcissism and basically play the victim card and then you're gonna look like the bad guy and that's where their relationship ended. Long story short, that lack of support and of course, you know, just not having a sense of identity anymore. You don't know who you are anymore. Now, let's be real with ourselves. When a narcissist breaks up with you, you want revenge, you feel angry, but you kind of want the bag because the trauma bond is there, right? What I want you to do is I want you to take all of this pain and I want you to channel it into self-growth because 
I know that if they dump you, you want revenge on them, right? You're so angry because you've put up with everything for so long. You had hope for so long and they finally left you and now you're broken. You're destroyed, but you still want them back. So what I want you to do, I want you to take all of this pain and channel it into self-growth because guess what? There is nothing better. There's no better revenge, especially from a narcissist, than to channel all of it into self-growth and succeed you know, channel it into your intellectual self-growth, into your physical self-growth, do something healthy every day, eat healthier, start working out, going to the gym, going on walks, connecting with nature, and do something intellectually stimulating every day. And another step I want you to take, because I know you're hurting, I've been there, you want to write down all the terrible things about this relationship. And you might even cry a little as you're doing it, you might cry a lot actually, but I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to actually write down all the times she devalued you all the time she lied to you all the time she made you feel like a lesser human being all the time she made you feel like you're the problem all the time she chipped away from you maybe all the time she cheated on you when she left you when she dumped you when she inflicted pain on you write all of that down so that you are reminded that there's nothing to miss in that relationship okay and then what i want you to do i want you to take another piece of paper and I want you to write down all the things you want in a loving relationship, all the things you want from a partner that's going to be kind to you, that's going to be your best friend, that's not going to chip away from you, that's going to support you, you know, a normal loving relationship. Write down all of your expectations and requirements from a normal loving relationship because you cannot want something when you don't have an idea of a loving relationship, when you don't have an idea of a loving partner, you need to visualize it, verbalize it, put it on a piece of paper. And then when you're gonna miss them, when that trauma bond's gonna come knocking, I want you to take the two lists and compare and understand the freaking discrepancy between the two. What you had never would have been what you want and what you actually desire, okay? And what you should have because you're probably not the abuser you've been abused so you're probably the giver in that relationship right and you deserve to have that loving relationship but what you had never would have changed have that radical acceptance and maybe it's gonna hurt a little bit less when you compare the two and when you understand that the entire relationship was a lie i truly hope this content is helpful for you guys and if you need that healing if you need that jump start and that support please don't hesitate to schedule one-on-one -on -one coaching with me my link is in my bio and of course like my video subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in my next video